Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here. Welcome to the channel and welcome back to our brand new playthrough of Arkham Horror 2nd Edition and the scenario Dust to Dust, where we're up against Quatchel Uteus. And just before we start our first turn, obviously we've got to pick ourselves out a Mythos card and uh, get a gate on the board, monsters, all the paraphernalia, so let's get on with it. So here is our Mythos deck, 25 cards. We'll just give him a quick shuffle because it's the first draw, and uh, then we'll be all right after that. I have shuffled them before, but we'll do it again, and we'll give him a quick cut. We'll find out what we're going to get. So, dun dun dun. And we get Strange Vision Cease, a headline. But first of all, we do get a gate. We get a gate at Independence Square. So we've got to sort that out. So let's dig a gate out. Let's get right to the bottom. And pick one out. And we get a normal gate. And it is Unknown Kadath, a minus one gate. So we'll put that on a stand. And it goes to Independent Square. So that means the clue at Independent Square is going to go somewhere else. So let's see what it says on the card. It's going to go to the Silver Twilight Lodge. Awesome. Move that out of the way. And we've now got two clues at the Silver Twilight Lodge. So we might want to pick those up, mightn't we? And we need a monster. So let's get the bag and get right to the bottom and pick one out. And here we go. What have we got? A zombie, which is a moon monster. So it's plus one to evade. Quite easy to evade because quite slow. Undead. She screamed and fired again, but still the thing shambled on, teeth dripping. As it groaned its horrible cry. Dun, dun, dun. So minus one on the horror check can lose a sanity. Minus one on the combat check. But uh, it can do two damage. And it's only one toughness. So that'll do us. We'll get ourselves one of our six monster stands for Arkham. So we've got five left. As regards the uh, monster limit. And we'll put him up at Independence Square. So as far as a guardian for the gate, we'll take a zombie. It's not too bad. So Unknown Kadath is at Independence Square, guarded by a zombie. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Right, oh. So we'll just check monster movement. We've got immediate monster movement. And it was a moon monster, so it's going to move on white. So that's going to move on white, and we've got a plus. But I think our other monsters, the Warlocks don't move the yellow, and I think it's a circular, it's a circle monster, the Wizard Waitley. It is. So it is just the zombie which moves into the downtown streets, which is annoying because that just like stuffs us up for movement. But c'est la vie. And because we had a gate, that means we put a Doom Token on Quatulateus. Our first Doom Token is on the board. I'll get rid of the rest of those. I'll put a Doom Token on top of them so I won't forget next time. And we'll carry on. So because we had this movement, we've got to go into our Rift Token back. Give them a bit of a shake. Pull one out, and that is, that looks like the North Point Lighthouse to me, it is, and it goes on the lower rift, that is, a, oh no, it's a white, no, the top rift, which is a white moon and a black plus sign, so we'll pop that on there. But still needs three more tokens before that rift comes out, so we're okay. Let's read the rest of the card. Strange Visions Cease. Headline. The first player 
chooses one rift token on the rift track. If the rift is active, turn the token face down. Otherwise, return it to the bank. All right. Well, there's none of them that are active. So, if it's not active, if that rift is active, turn the token face down. The rift isn't active. Otherwise, return it to the bank. So, we return it to the bank. So, that goes back to the bank, I believe. I believe I've read that right. The first player chooses one rift token on the rift track. So, obviously, we choose the one that's got a token on it, which is the one we've just put down. If that rift is active, it isn't. So we don't turn the token face down. Otherwise, we return it to the bank. And return it. That's the bank. So we've returned it. So that, uh, that was okay. Yes, very nice. And that was a Kingsport card. So there we go. We can discard that now. It's a headline. It's not a... Uh, it's not an environment card. A rumour. So brilliant. Okay, so that is it for the um, initial Mythos card. We're going to get start on with turn one right now. So in order to do that, we need to move to the upkeep phase. And here we are at the upkeep phase with Norman. Now, Norman, he's the first player. So he's got a decision to make. Yes, we've got the dust deck. Now we can pay three clues, which he does have. And we don't have to pick out of this deck. But I'd like to save those for later because the later dust decks are a lot more horrible. So if we can, <laughs> if we can keep those, brilliant. That does mean, though, we're going to have to pick out of this first dust deck. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll give it a quick shuffle. And, and what we're going to do is... Pick one. So it's, pretty, it's nearly as bad as Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, this. We're shuffling four cards, but at least we're not shuffling three. Okay, so we've got to pick this, and hopefully it won't be too bad. So let's have a look. I could feel the gaze of some unknown eye upon me, and the hair on my neck prickled. Inexplicably, I felt as though I had been judged and found wanting. Do not pass the first player token this turn. Okay, we've got away with it. We discard that, but we'll keep it to one side. And we've got three left. Yeah, so that's good. From what I recall of this dust deck, I haven't played Quatrilateus myself, but I have seen a game where it was played. I think it was Tragic the Blathering. I think there's a card in there that makes you discard all, all the first dust deck. That's the nasty one. And I think there is another one, though, that allows you to take all your discards and put them back in, which gives you a reprieve. So we've got a sort of, like, well, it's not 50-50, a 25% of chance of getting rid of all the deck and a 25% chance of rejuvenating the deck and I like those odds that's fine so uh, we'll save these for later when we need them so we've got away with that Norman is still living under the sword of Damocles but he's got away with it okay what's he going to do this turn so we've put his speed and sneak at three and one put his fight and will at two and two and put his law and luck at five and two and what he's going to do is he's going to pick up another clue. So he's going to go, unfortunately he's the first player, so we can't get that press pass to him before he picks up this clue. If we could, it'd mean he'd pick up two clues, but uh, Celavi, um we'll get that to him though. We'll get Tommy to uh, drop that off. And because we're getting Tommy to drop it off, we may as well get Norman as close to Tommy as we can. So that pretty much need, means the Black Cave of the Graveyard. And I think the Black Cave has got slightly better encounters than the Graveyard. So we'll send him to the Black Cave. He does have enough speed. Three is enough. One, two, three. Oh no, he needs four speed. But 
he does have a relationship card with our friend um, Tommy, a fellow travellers, so he's going to exhaust that. So that will give him the four that he needs to get to the Black Cave, so that's good. Is there anything else we need to do? No, it's fine. Oh, one thing though. Now, <laughs> in the past, a lot of people have, have gone on like, I've, I've won quite a lot of these games. I think I've only lost one on video. And um, one of the main reasons that I say for that is, is not my amazing dice rolling skills, though I've got to admit, I do, I do do pretty well with the dice, but because you guys helped me out. And this is an absolute example of that. I hadn't even considered this, but Purgatch had noticed that obviously Norman Withers had picked up Law Monster. And I was going on about the wizard weight lane, stopping him, to, stopping him going in a vortex and how we were going to do it. And Purgatch just said, uh, well, why don't you cast Law Monster? And that's, yeah, <laughs> that's the answer. So Wizard Waitley is not a problem anymore because if he starts moving and he's getting anywhere near a vortex, we'll just get Norman to cast this and that will drag the Wizard Waitley all the way towards us. So that is brilliant. When I picked this spell out, I was just thinking, what a crap spell. Well, I wouldn't think it was a crap spell, but, you know, I didn't think it was anything amazing. When it turns out, this is probably the best pick that I made um, when I was getting the starting equipment. So, Law Monster is just going to, like, it's really going to help us out with Wizard Waitley. He will not be going in a vortex. We just Law, Law Monster him to somewhere, I don't know, miles away, like the woods. <laughs> and we leave him there. So, woohoo! So, well done, Purgatch. Thank you very much. And as I say, that's just an example of how you guys really helped me out. That had just completely gone over my head. And Purgatch spotted that one. What a brilliant idea. So, uh, thank you, Purgatch. Fantastic. Helping us win the game. That's what I like. Come on! So, that's it for Norman. That's what he's going to do. I don't think we're going to do... I don't think there's anything else we can do. No, we're, we're not doing a spell check. King James's Bible's not going to come in. We could exhaust that to get plus one on a horror check. But um, that's in the movement phase. So, yeah, I think we're fine. That is it for Norman. Next up, it will be Tommy Muldoon. And here we are with Tommy Muldoon. What's his setup? Well, he's going 4 and 0 for speed and sneak. We need a high speed because we want to do a bit of trading with Norman. His fight is going to go to 5 and his will is going to go to 1. Normally we'd have it in the middle, but uh, we've got a plan. And law and luck, he's got 2 law and 4 luck. Right, so what's the plan with Tommy? Well, Tommy, he's going to need 6 movement. So we've got four there. We're going to get another two by tapping his motorbike. That means he can move three spaces to the Black Cave because we've moved Norman a bit closer to it. That means he can pass over the press pass to him, which is great. And then he'll come out of there. He needs another three movement and he's going to go to the Witch House. We want to kill that Warlock. We're going to try and kill a Warlock that means we'll only have to spend two clues if we want to avoid a dust card. Hopefully, it'll stay off the board for a couple of turns. We'll just have to hope that, that happens. And uh, he can pick up the clue there as well at the Witch House. And that'll give him three clues, which may be very important. When we're taking on this Warlock, now it does mean we're going to fail the sanity test, but that's all right. We're only going to lose one sanity, so that's great. Horror check, fine, no problem. Then we're going to fight it, but it's got four toughness, so we need four successes. It's magically immune, so we can't use the alien device, but we can use Becky. So we've got five here. We've got five for Becky, which is ten dice. We've got skull crackers because that is our relationship card with Zoe Samaras. So that'll give us plus one. So that's going to give us 11. It's minus three on the combat for the Warlock. So that's going to put us down to eight. So 
So we've got eight dice to get four successes. Obviously, it'd help a lot better if we're blessed, but we will have three clue tokens by that time. The two he's already got and the one he's going to pick up. And hopefully he will kill that warlock. So we'll get rid of at least one of them. And then we can um, we can just hope that that warlock is going to stay off the board for a bit of time. We're not going to pay the extra two uh, clues in order to put it back in the box because that'll get rid of the first dust deck. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave that a bit um, and see how we go on. But um, I think we can, I think we can like leave it a few turns. Okay, you know, it's a bit of a risk, but uh, you risk and reward this game, you've just got to go for it. So that is what we're going to try and do. First risk is we're going to try and kill the Warlock. Because if we don't, poor old Tommy is going to have to pick another dust card, which is bad enough in itself. And then what we're going to do is we're going to risk the fact that we're not going to put the Warlock back into the box. We won't be able to. I mean, we might be able to. He might still have his three clues. We might roll like a demon. So I might change my mind on that. I might not. And final risk we're taking is we're not going to the Silver Twilight Lodge to pick up those two clues. I'm just gambling that we're not going to get a gate at the Silver Twilight Lodge. I hope we don't get a gate at the Silver Twilight Lodge because that'll really annoy me. Because what I'd like to do is next turn, I'd like Norman with his press pass to go to the Silver Twilight Lodge. He'd pick up those two clues and get an extra one. So he'd end up getting three clues. He's already got three and he'd end up with six then, which is great. And uh, if we can get him with a few clues in the bank for getting rid of dust cards, I think that'll do us really well going forwards. But that's the plan for Tommy. And after all, if he dies, it's all part of his personal story. <laughs> so Tommy's gung-ho for it. Right, oh, that's it for Tommy. Next up is Zoe. And here we are with Zoe. What have we set her up as? Well, she's got four speed, one sneak. She's got uh, a fight of two, a will of three. And she's got a law of four and a luck of two. What is the plan for her? Well, she... Originally, I was going to send her up to Dunwich. But I think we've got a little bit of time. And I'd like for her to get a, a better physical weapon. Because if she's going up there to deal with the Wizard Waitley, he's magically immune. So he's going to cause us problems. However, there is a very good weapon. We've got the Athame. So uh, apparently that's the way you pronounce it. We've got the Athame that Agnes has got. So if we can get a trade organised there, brilliant. And I figured out a way to do it. And I've also figured out a way to start up her personal story and uh, get her first monster trophy. That's right, she is going to the downtown streets where that zombie is. We've got to get it out of the way anyway, so, you know, so somebody can get in that gate to close and seal it, hopefully. So she only needs um, two speed, but she's only got one focus. And most of the time, she won't be sneaking past anything anyway, so I've just put her up at four speed, uh, leave it at that. And she's going to go to downtown, she's going to take on this zombie, quite easy with her enchanted knife and a cross remember that's going to count because it's undead um we should be able to easily defeat the zombie that'll be one towards her five monster trophies on there so that'll be good and she'll just kill it and that is it for her that's all she's doing she's not too far from the train station for when we actually want to get her back up there to uh, sort out the wizard waitley so that's it for zoe samaras Next up, it will be Agnes Baker. And here we are with Agnes. So we've set her up with a speed and sneak of four and zero. Her fight is two and two, two will as well. Law and luck is four and three. And that's how she is set up. Uh, I've kept her luck quite high because she's got the plus one law. Five law should be fine. And uh, she should be able to uh, take on anything with that. So the plan with her is she's going to trade. Now, fortunately, she's got enough speed 
So she'll move two because hopefully I, um, Zoe will have already killed the zombie. So she can move into downtown. She can trade the Athame for a normal knife. Remember, Zoe has got a normal physical knife. So they'll just swap knives. And then Agnes has got two movement points left. With those two movement points, she's going to go back to East Town and then into Hibbs Roadhouse and pick up that clue. That'll give her four clues. Oh, I think that'll that'll be okay. Um, it also means... Does Best of Friends come in? No, they're not in the same neighbourhood, unfortunately. They're moving from East Town to Downtown. They did, and um, they just sort of cross paths in the night. So, unfortunately, they won't be able to use Best of Friends um during the encounter phase but never mind okay so we're just going to do a quick trade and then she's going to pick up a clue in hibbs roadhouse and that is it for the upkeep phase next up is the arkham encounter phase And here we are at the movement phase, not the Arkham Encounter phase, the movement phase. I'm a clown. Anyway, <laughs> it's got old Norman to go first and there he is at the administration building. So as we mentioned, he is going to exhaust fellow travellers. That'll give him an extra movement point. And he is going to go one to Miskatonic University, two to French Hill. Three to Rivertown, and he's going to end up in the Black Cave. I nearly went into the graveyard then, but it's the Black Cave he's going, and he is going to pick up this clue. So that gives him four clues. Good stuff. And that is it for his movement phase. Next up, it will be Tommy Muldoon. And here we are with Tommy. He's up at the police station. What we've got to do first of all is just got to make sure we tap his motorcycle. So that's going to give him two extra movement points and that's going to give him a total of six. So he's going to go one to East Town, two to River Town, third one to the Black Cave where he's going to meet Norm and they're going to have a bit of swapsies. Well, not much of swapsies, to be honest, because... <laughs> <laughs> All he's going to do is give Norman some things. He's going to give him the press pass. And also the other thing that I forgot to say he was going to give him is the map of Arkham. That will just improve um, Norman's movement, which is only three. He's got a speed of three. It's not too good. So the map of Arkham and fellow travellers, that should get him up to five pretty regularly. And Tommy's got you know, four movement and his motorcycle, so he should be fine. Okie doke, so those two things go to Norman. That's great stuff. And Tommy can carry on. So Tommy got he's got three movement points left, so he's gonna go back to Rivertown, French Hill, and then yes, he's gonna go for it here with our friend the warlock. He does pick up this clue, however. So that does give him three clues. We may well need that. And the Warlock. Well, he's going to be fighting him. We are not going to be avoiding him. So we don't need to look at the evade. But we've got minus one for the will check. Now, unfortunately, he's got a will of one. Tommy Muldoon. So he's going to fail that straight off. Which means he pays a sanity into the supply so pop that in there he's gone down to five sanity seeing this horrendous warlock somebody's rang in says there's some nutter in the witch house he's burst in and there's some warlock with a load of like pentacles on the floor so i mean callous disregard for fire regulations with all these black candles and everything and to tommy's horrified but he's got to go and take him down so we're going to need this, the good old dice tower. And right, so we've got Becky, because now we've moved on to the combat, which is minus three on the combat. Ooh. So 
Becky's five, he's got five, that's ten. We're going to use skull crackers, so we have exhausted that. And that's eleven. Minus three is eight dice. So we're going to have eight dice here. And come on! So eight normal dice, so that's three, six, eight. And we do have three clues, so we'll get those out in case we need to use them. So what we need here is we do need four successes. So come on. You can do it, Tommy. We believe in you. Come on, lad. Ooh, we've got two successes. So only two successes. And look at all those failures. Failures. Don't like failure. So these six, they'll have to go into the naughty corner. All right, we're going to spend our first clue and re-roll a die. Come on, Tommy, you can do it, mate. Come on. Six, yes. So that clue, make sure I don't leave it on the Silver Twilight Lodge. So he's now got three successes. He's got two clues to get, uh, to get another success. So he's going to spend another clue. Put it there, and let's roll another die. Come on, five or a six, mate. A five or a six. You can do it. You can kill it. Yes! Good in. Fantastic. Two sixes. You notice I rolled them one at a time. This is for pencil poly, this. <laughs> I rolled them one at a time. So I'd get sixes. So brilliant. Fantastic. So we used two clues though, so we've only got one left, but that was well worth it, I think. We got the four successes that we needed to kill this guy. Now, we, because we don't have um, an ability to counteract Endless, we don't get the two clue tokens on here. And as mentioned, he's now a spawn monster, so he doesn't go back to the box. So we'll put him at the side of the board, but we have got rid of him. And that is fantastic news. So there we go. Good old Tommy. Taking no prisoners. Well done. Well done, kids. And he has done a fantastic job there. That is so good. That is so, so good. Oh, by the way, the reason I didn't use... Um, he does have his bravery card. The reason I didn't use it is because he didn't have um, a dice to roll on his horror check. So, of course, you can't re-roll nothing. Okay. Right. Oh, and that is it for Tommy. And next up, it will be Zoe Samaras. And here we are with Zoe. She's at the train station. So she's just going to move two. She's going to go up north side, then downtown. And there's a zombie. So she's going to have to take it on. So we'll get this in here. Can we see it? Yes, we can put it there. And she's going to take this zombie on. First of all, we've got to do a horror check, which is minus one. So let's check her gear. She has, she has a cross, which is plus one to a horror check. And she has a will of three, so that's four. I think that is it. Four, yes. So she's got four dice, which is minus one. So we're going to roll three dice, and we need a success. Come on, Zoe. And we get two successes. Um, it's really important that she does get successes on horror checks, because uh, she's only got a sanity of three. So we don't want to go in hat stand, really. But she does have the healing stone. So uh, hopefully that'll help us out. But she's passed that, so she's got by the horror check and next it is the combat check now we only need one success here so hopefully it's going to work out it's going to be minus one on it but we do have there is it we have the cross and the enchanted knife that is what we're going to be using they've each got a hand each so she can use both of them Cross, it's an undead monster, so we're going to get plus three if opponent is undead. 
we're going to get plus three because of the enchanted knife, which is six. She has a fight of two, so that's eight dice. Eight dice, minus one, seven dice. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And all we need is a single success. Come on, Zoe, you can do it. And bloody hell, a single success was all she got as well. Just one five. Oof. But that's enough. That is her first trophy against her personal story. So well done, Zoe. That's what we like to see. Put those, whoop. Put those back and put my clue back on the unvisited aisle. We don't want to lose that. We get a monster stand back, which is great. And she gets her cross and her enchanted knife back. Okay, good stuff. This is what we like. Okay, so she's managed to do that. That is great news. Just what we wanted. And I think that is it for her go. There's nothing else for her to do. So let's move across and find out what Agnes is doing. And here we are with Agnes. Quite straightforward to her. She's going to meet her best of friends. So she's going to go one, two. She's going to have a little natter with the zombie killer, Zoe. How are things going? Oh, just killed a zombie, as you do. Oh, let's do lunch. Anyway, while they're there having the chat, they are going to trade. So, it's going to give the knife to Agnes. And Agnes is going to say, well, I've got a better knife than that. You better take this. So, the Athame, which is uh, going to be really good for taking out our friend, the wizard Waitley, if we have to do it. So that is the trade that has occurred. And she's a bit, she hasn't got a lot now, Agnes, as regards weaponry. We might have to try and find something for her. Um, but, you know, we'll see how it goes on. I'm not really planning on her doing a lot of fighting. She's more of a gate closer. So hopefully she'll be able to do that. Anyway, she's traded, they've had lunch, and she's now going to head to Hibbs Roadhouse for a drink. So one to East Town, then into Hibbs Roadhouse, and she picks up that clue, which gives her an extra clue. She's now got four, and she'll soon be ready to try and seal gates. So perhaps we can get her to Independent Square, an unknown Kadath. We shall see. All right, that is it for the movement phase. And now, now it's the Arkham encounter phase. And here we are at the Arkham encounter phase. So first up, it's good old Norm and he's in the Black Cave. So that is the Rivertown Streets. So I'll give these a quick shuffle and a cut. And let's see what we get. The Black Cave. You stumble upon a pocket of bad air. Coughing, you struggle to stagger free. Make a will minus one check. Ooh, will minus one. What's his will? His will is two which is pants but he does have psychology which is his skill so when you make any will check add plus one to each die so that's good it's like he's blessed excellent because his will is two so he's just gonna have a single check and a single die so ugh, bit grim Let's give it a roll. We'll take one of these successes from earlier. We need a four or better. A four. <laughs> we love it. So he's passed because of his psychology. And let's see what we get. If you pass, nothing happens. If you fail, lose three stamina. So it's a good job we passed. Brilliant. That's him. And... Next up, it is going to be our friend, Tommy. Uh, 
And here we are with Tommy. I left the bloody Rivertown deck out and he's not in Rivertown. <laughs> no, he's here in French Hill. So again, quick shuffle and a cut. And he's in the witch house. So let's see what it says. A gate and a monster appear. Well, that's bad. Well, that is extremely bad. Oh, cobblers. <laughs> the monster's not so bad. The monster isn't so bad, but uh, because he's, uh, he's pretty tough, but he's just going to get sucked through a gate, which is unfortunate. Now, when a gate opens, we've got to roll to see if this guy comes back on. So let's do that roll. One or a two. He goes back to the witch house. A three. So he doesn't come back on the board. That's okay. But uh, we do get another guy. We get another another of these. This is bad. Getting two gates opening. How bad's that? So it's a lurker gate and it's a split gate. So we can either go to the abyss or to relay. But it's minus four to shut. So where are we going to send him? Relay is pretty bad, but um, from what I recall, the Abyss isn't much better. The Abyss is, yes, I think they're both. We'll send him to the Abyss. I think the Abyss might be slightly better. So the Abyss is just off to one side here, so we're going to have to lay him down. And uh, yeah, that's pretty grim. How unlucky is that? That's the last thing we wanted, was um, a gate to appear. And da, 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 we need a monster. So let's get a monster. And uh, what do we get? A crawling one. Ooh, circle monster. These are, these are bad as well. Circular monster and minus one to sneak by. Physically resistant. Before making a combat check with a crawling one, roll a die. The six, the X result is uh, what's going to go as its combat. So it could be minus six on the combat. It's only got one toughness though, but that's a nasty horror check. Minus three and you can lose three sanity. And you can lose two stamina if you fail the combat check. So that's pretty pants. Especially after we've been killing a couple of monsters this turn. Ooh. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. So he's been doing really well. Had, uh, had Tommy. But a gate and a monster have appeared on him in the what in the witch house. That warlock must have been summoning a gate, a portal. Crawling one's come out of it just after he's killed the warlock. And he's been sucked through the gate. Bummer. Okay, well, that's it for Tommy. Next up it will be Zoe. And here we are with Zoe, and Zoe doesn't actually get an encounter phase. Why? Because she's in a street location. So, what we'll do is, we'll come back and we will do Agnes instead. And here we are with Agnes, she's at Hibbs Roadhouse. So, let's get the East Town deck, the grey deck. And, yep, it needs a little shuffle because you have to shuffle the location decks. And I'm making a balls of it. There we go, that's a bit better. And we'll do a cut. And let's see how she goes on. Hibbs Roadhouse. So what's your story, friend? A smiling man inquires about your adventures over, the gla over a glass of gin. You tell him your story. If you spend three clue tokens, he introduces himself as Ryan Dean and asks to join you. Hmm... Three clue tokens is pretty stiff. She has those. We'll just check the ally deck. Remember, this is free information, but I don't think we've got Ryan Dean. 
So we've got Anna Caslow, Eric Colt, Sir William Brinton, John Lagrasse, Thomas F. Malone, Zebulon, Professor Rice, Earl Sawyer, Professor Morgan, Thomas Olney, and the Terrible Old Man. So we don't hit we don't have Orion. And three clue tokens. I can't imagine there's anything that costs three clue tokens that we'll be interested in. So we're not gonna do it, but let's see what we would have got. If it's not available, he gives you some useful items instead. Draw two common items. I don't think that's worth um, three clues. So, uh, nothing happens. He just has a nice chat with Ryan Dean. Righto. That is it for the Arkham Encounter phase, I think. Now, if anybody was in another world... It's uh, they get a otherworld encounter, and guess what? Yes, we've got one because <laughs> because Tommy has just been sent to the abyss. So let's get back to Tommy and see what goes on in the other world. Hello and welcome to the other world encounter phase where we've got poor old Tommy. Now he is on his side, but he's not injured or anything. He's just delayed. That's why he's on his side. But he's in another world. It's the other world encounter phase. So that means he's got to have another world encounter. So let's get this huge deck. So <laughs> this is the other world encounter deck. I'll give it a bit of a shuffle. Um, I'm doing it off camera because otherwise I'll just drop them everywhere. I'm nearly dropping them now as it is. But there I am, smooshing them all together. And what we'll do is, what I can do on camera is obviously do a bit of a cut. So we'll do that. I can't pick them up though. Blimey. Ugh. Forget that one on the bottom. <laughs> we'll just take this one on the top. What we're looking for now is we're looking for a red or a blue card. We've got a blue card and it's got the abyss on it. The vast desolate landscape gives you no sense of progress. You walk for what seems days and yet you see nothing growing closer, nothing fading away as you move away from it, lose one sanity. So he's lost a sanity there. And he's going to be really unlucky here because... He's going to end up having three encounters <laughs> in the abyss because he can't move next turn. He can only stand up. So what's happened there is pretty bad. He's, uh, he's lost a sanity, unfortunately. And that puts him down to four. So he's lost two sanity this turn. Not the best. And things are only going to get worse because that's the end of the other world encounter phase. And next up, oh yes, it's the laugh and chuckle phase. And here we are, the good old laugh and chuckle phase. So I've got it all set up here. So <laughs> let's go for it. Get rid of him and... We'll find out if he ends up going on the Doom track. Do we get a gate? We do get a gate. And it's the Unnameable. Oh. So we've got a gate at the Unnameable. So, third gate. Third gate, turn one. Just the end of turn one, we've got three gates. Brilliant. That clue's going to go somewhere. The clue appears at the woods. So we've got two clues at the woods, as well as two clues up at the Twilight Lodge. We're going to need a gate. So let's see what we get. And we get, let's go up from the bottom. Oh, another lurker gate. Uh, it's another split gate. So we could go to Yugoth or another dimension, but it's minus three. These are, oh. These are tough minus three and a minus four gate that we've got. So whoever goes there has to decide which one they have to go to. I think another dimension is fairly easy. 
and Yugoth, not so easy. Yeah, probably choose to go to another dimension in that case. So, bit of a bummer. Monster, that's next. You got monster we get. I'm really regretting not having cultists in here because they're nice and easy. And I tell you what aren't easy, star spawns are not easy. Plus monster, minus one to sneak past. The bosun was the only one left alive. We dragged him screaming from the cargo hold. That thing, you wept. Not a whale, not an island. So, <laughs> minus three, I'll lose two sanity. Oof. Minus three, I'll lose three stamina, and it's three toughness. Buddy star spawn. Crap. Ah, and that is another stand. We've got a star spawn at the unnameable, which is a bit of a blow. Ooh, pants. Uh, we've got another gate, so we've got a roll for our friend. The warlock down here, so let's hope we don't get a one or a two. We get a six, that's great. So he doesn't come back on the board. And let's get that because I think we've just got to check monster movement. So slashes, triangles, star, so it moves on white. We've got hexagon movement, but I think our hexagons are warlocks and they don't move. Well, one warlock. Oh no, it's a circle. I always thought they were hexagons. Just goes to show us a circle monster. So Wizard Weight Lane, the Warlocks don't move anyway. Uh, we have got a Star Monster. No, we haven't got a Star Monster. We've got a Star Spawn. <laughs> so that doesn't move. Did we have a Slash Monster? No, Crawling One is a Circle. So I don't think we've got any monster movement whatsoever. No, cool. But we've got to match that. That is down here on... The rift track. So let's see. Pick one out. And what have we got there? I think that's the rope and anchor. Focus. I think that's the rope and anchor. It is. So that is going to go down here on the bottom rift. And I don't think we're going to be able to take that one off this time. Which is a bit of a downer. And done that so i think the last thing to do is to read oh it's another headline missing people return headline all investigators currently lost in time and space immediately return to arkham appearing in a street or location of their choice well we've got nobody lost in time and space so we can just discard this so i've got two headlines not too shabby and um, put that back and Oh, we can put this. I'm gonna really, I'm gonna have to grow some nails. I can't, <laughs> I just can't pick anything up. We do put another doom token on, so we've got two doom out of 12, and we'll put another doom token on top of the mythos deck. So I remember next time, we can put this out of the way. All right, so what happened there? Well, we did okay, and we didn't. I mean, I was really glad to get that Warlock off the board. So at least we've got one off the board. We got two new gates, which wasn't too too great. But we rolled twice for Mr. Warlock. He didn't come back on. So that's okay. Um, but the two gates we got were two split gates, which are lurker gates. Now, split gates aren't too bad, except... One's a minus four and one's a minus three. And that makes them really difficult to close. We can't seal them because nobody's got enough uh, clues as yet. And we haven't got an elder sign. So, ugh. poor old Tommy. Well, he is in another world, but he's delayed. So it's going to take him two turns to get out of there. He doesn't have find gate, unlike uh, Norman. But apart from that, you know, we did do all right. We've got two locations that have got two clues each 
in the woods and the Silver Twilight Lodge. So I think we'll try and get, um, we'll see if Norman can pick those up because he's got the press pass and uh, that will give him a lot of extra clues. And then he's ready for taking on the dust deck. And which only two clues next turn because we killed that what well we got that warlock off the board. So he might actually pay the two clues next turn because uh, he's got four at the moment. It looks like he's going to pick up three from the Silver Twilight Lodge. And if he can get down to the woods, he can pick up three from there. So that's looking good. Um, Zoe did, I mean, she killed one of her monsters. Uh, she's got a trophy. She's in downtown. She's got the Athame, so she should be able to get to the train station, get into Dunwich, and she might even be able to take on the Wizard Waitley with the Athame, because um, she's going to make him, what is it, her special ability will make him magically resistant, and um, rather than magically immune, and that Athame... Um, that gets uh, an extra boost if you're against magically resistant um, monsters. So if she can get four hits on him, we can get rid of him as well, and that'd be really cool. And then we'll only have um, we'll only have the single warlock down in um, down in Kingsport. We got lucky in Kingsport because at the first uh, gate that we pulled, we ended up getting a Mythos card that essentially put the Rift token back in the bag. So we've only got one Rift token out in Kingsport. So I think we can leave that for a while before we have to send somebody down there. Uh, Agnes, yeah, she did a bit of trading. She picked up a clue from Hibbs Roadhouse. She's got four clues. She needs to pick up one more. And I think she's going to have to get that from the Unvisited Isle because I want her to pick up the clue from the Unvisited Isle, which will give, us, give her five. And then she can get to Independent Square, which is our best chance of closing and sealing a gate because it's a minus one gate. So I think we will try that. But if we keep getting gates and monsters appears in encounters, we're going to lose this game pretty quickly because we've got three gates open already and it's the end of turn one. And that is just really bad. Two gates at the end of turn one. You expect that because you get a gate for the first Mythos card, and you'll get a gate for, obviously, the Mythos card that you get at the end of turn one. But three gates, that's taking the mick. So we're in trouble. We're in big trouble. But other than that, we've done okay. Um, you know, the encounters could have gone a bit better. But apart from that, I think, uh, I think we're doing pretty well, considering that this is a really tough scenario. So thank you for watching. Thank you for all the help and support. And those of you that have liked or disliked the videos, thank you too, as well as all the subscribers. You're a set of stars. If you've noticed any mistakes whatsoever, give me a shout. I will do my best to fix them before the start of next turn, and then we'll be laughing, won't we? Uh, anybody who's got the board game links to upvote the site, thank you very much. And similarly, anybody who has um, liked the videos on BGG or... Um, you know, drop geek gold, anything like that. Thank you so much. So I think that is pretty. M oh yeah, any followers on Twitter, on Facebook, or Instagram, that sort of thing. Thank you to you too. You're all brilliant, every one of you. And that is it for turn one of Dust to Dust. I hope to see you next time for turn two. But until then, this is me. Cat Weasel saying, to loot.